Hi folks, I have an idea. Can we use the fourth axis with a tailstock to build a trunnion to make this adapter block that's got multiple holes drilled at multiple angles? We're gonna model it up in Fusion 360. We're gonna machine the trunnion. We'll figure out if we can dial it in and get the tolerances and accuracy that we need and we'll see if it works. Welcome to our Wednesday widget. We have a model of our fourth axis, which somebody on the Tormach Facebook group posted, but God bless GrabCAD. It appears, I think this is the same stuff. I'll include this link in the video description, uh, but all of these solid models are available, which is just, I love the world we live in. Folks, this is so cool. I'm gonna double click the rotary table, eight inch, which is the one that we've got. Before we add the actual chuck, let's fix this fourth axis for some modeling simulation stuff. So right now I can move both pieces around, that's no good. I'll hit revert. You can see I've got the fourth axis itself and then I've got the platter on the front. Let's ground the fourth axis. So I right click, ground. That means I can't move it around because it's locked to the table, which kind of makes sense. This I can still move around, so I'll hit revert to move it back into place. Go to assemble. Now I could do joint, but because it was modeled in place, it's a little bit quicker to do as built joint because it's Fusion's smart enough to look and see, hey, it's in place so I can kind of figure it out. So I'll do a revolute joint, select two components. I'll select the platter and I'll select the fourth axis and it needs a reference point. So now I can just click any center point. So I'm hovering over this area, holding the control key. Holding down the control key avoids it from reselecting a new thing, which can be frustrating, so it locks down these points. And now I can click that center point, and boom. That is accurately showing the representation of that fourth axis. I wanna add the chuck now. So right click, and I'll choose insert into current design, a little pro tip, make sure you have your parent level component active. If you have a subcomponent active, say like this platter, it would make the chuck a, a subcomponent of that. And in, in this case, I'd like it to, to be at the parent level. Right click, insert into current design. It's gonna put it, I'm sure, in the wrong position. Of course it did, that's okay, don't worry about it. You do get one free move, I like to call it here. So I'm gonna take it for now and with the squares, I can drag it just about any which way. So I'm gonna drag it over to here, and you don't have to do this because it's all gonna get solved when we do the joint here in a second, but it can help just give you an idea of what you're doing. So I'll use the arrow bands to rotate it, and that's actually all we need to do. So click OK. Now when I said you get one free move, what I mean is it places it in without there being a parametric move event, which is that infamous capture or revert thing up here. For instance, right now, if I move this, I can either capture that position or I can revert back. That has to do with this idea that you can store different locations of parts. So think if you were building an excavator or a backhoe, you could actually store CAD styles when the excavator is folded up or when it's extended out, which is actually kind of cool. One thing I realize I don't like is I don't want these to be separate. That's, I don't care about their functionality for now. So I'll do assemble. Rigid group, one, two, oops, actually I can just drag a box around it. No, gotta pick them all. Those four components, click okay. So those function as one, because I'm not worried about the jaws right now. Assemble, joint, uh, continue, I don't wanna capture that position. Hold the control key down with my mouse hovered over here. I'll pick that coin. Notice I am on Revolut. Although, let's think about that. I actually want to be rigid because the plate itself already, already rotates. I'll hold the control key here, click that coin. That locks the chuck to the platter, click OK. Boom, we now have a fourth axis that works. Great. I'm gonna break the link back to the original file just to keep everything embedded in one file. The link means that the 
CAD data for this chuck is not inside this file, but rather linked back to that external file. So that would be useful if you were gonna change the chuck, but I know it's going to exist. I like to keep it self-contained. Actually makes it right now easier for us to export this file and put it up as a link for our Patreon supporters to download. Okay, we got that done. Here's our part. Right click, insert into current design. I will move it and let's rotate it. And we'll put it somewhere around here. Okay. Angle drill block the part. I will leave with the little chain link back to the part file because we may actually change that part file on its own and that'll flow through to this model, which is perfect. Let's start on our trunnion. Right click, new component, trunnion. I'm gonna just take a couple measurements. We've got a four by one inch by one inch part, perfect. I'm gonna hide it with the light bulb, C for circle, and I'll click on the face right here. Let's just model. I don't know exactly where this is gonna go, but I have an idea. Uh, let's see here, if we do 0.75, actually I might have a one inch dowel pin, we'll see. E for extrude, and I'll come out probably three inches. So that's gonna be a pin. So I'm actually gonna rename this component pin. Now we'll do the trunnion. Right click, new component, trunnion. This is one reason why I don't get too hung up if I make a mistake or I wanna change something. Just start modeling. It's so much easier for me to react to changes than it is to get hamstrung and paralyzed trying to worry about how to do it. So now I'm going to, I'm gonna do sketch rectangle center rectangle. A lot, a lot of ways to do this actually. I'm gonna sketch on the face of that pin we just made. So if I do a, I've got a one and a half inch piece of stock out that I want to use for this. So we'll say 1.5 by 1. And I'll just hit enter. E for extrude and let's move that. We'll just move it negative 0.75 over the block. I'm gonna change this diameter of that pin. I think that's gonna, one inch is too big. So we'll go back to a half inch. Activate the pin, right click, edit sketch, and I can just change it to 0.5, and that should parametrically flow through when I reactivate the trunnion, which is awesome. Now I'll build out the rest of it, L for line. I'll click on this face. I'm gonna sketch over to here, up to here. We'll constrain this stuff back. In fact, I like to make things incorrect because we'll come back and fix it. So D for dimension, I'm gonna have the outside. So we know our part was four inches, so the inside dimension, which is here to here, we'll say is 4.0, 4.01, doesn't need to be much more. And this would be, actually instead of dimensioning that, We'll hit collinear, and I'll click this line with that line. And what was the thickness of this? 0.75, D for dimension, this, link it back to that. And how thick do I want this to be? I'm not sure, to be honest with you, but we'll make it 0.75 for now, maybe. I want plenty of thickness, D for extrude, Click this and I'll say to object. I used to struggle with this. If you click here, it doesn't always work. So instead of the face, I'll deselect that and I'll pick this little corner point. Boom, now I get a parametric link to that, which is what I want. Click okay. And I wanna put a dead center point on this other end. So we'll do uh, sketch point on this face 
And I want that point to be dead center of my model, which there it is. Create hole on that point. And we'll change it to a countersink. Uh, diameter, just say 0.25. And countersink diameter, 0.375. Depth, 0.4. Just trying to get something approximate, no, not that deep, to show the live center. Yeah, it's good enough. Go back, activate our parent component, and I need to create the joint between the pin and our trunnion. So we can use as built joint, rigid, this, this, okay. And then I need a link between this and this. So we can do, here I think we can actually do, try a rigid group. Rigid group is where you don't wanna create a, it was just like how we locked these jaws into the vice, uh, the chuck body. I don't want to worry about having to tell it exactly where the control points or move points are. I just want everything to lock into place. So rigid group, this and this, maybe that alone will work. Okay, there we go. That's all we needed. Great. Now, it's actually a good Fusion Friday would be to model up uh, or to show how to model this vice with the jaws moving. But for now, unless we have problems with the drills interfering, which is one reason why I wanted to model this up, we'll just leave those jaws as is, even though they're sticking up higher than they will when we're actually making the part. Turn my angle block back on. Revert. We need to create a joint to locate our part on our trunnion. Assemble joint, and what face do I want on our part? So I'm gonna hide the trunnion so I can see. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I'll try one of the perpendicular faces to the holes though. I have an idea on that. So I'll click the center coin right here, and then I'm gonna hide the part Turn the trunnion back on. Well, that's weird, normally I thought it went away. Uh, and I'll click the center coin here. Okay, so then the question is though, and this is one of those fifth axis machines or, or fourth axis machines are one of those examples where bigger isn't better. I want, the, I want the larger size for rigidity, but in this case, I wanna also be able to get to certain aspects of the part. So I did the wrong side, I wanted these to be face down, because we're gonna use those to secure them in. And I'm also gonna to wanna to shift it up. So let me first fix the coin orientation. So I can uncheck that coin and pick instead that coin. And I've created a offset of let's say 0.25. And that brings it up flush, which should work We've gotta be careful because when you do fourth axis work, you have to have your X, Y, Z, zero be the center point of rotation, but I believe I can still have this stuff off center. That makes sense. Let's click okay. I need to project those two uh, holes. Those are quarter 20s that we're gonna to use to clamp the part down to the trunnion. So my trunnion component is active. P for project, I'm gonna project onto this plane and to pick those holes, I'm gonna actually turn the trunnion off, visibility off, and that lets me more easily select one, two, turn the part off, trunnion on, I've now got those two holes. Purple means they're parametrically linked back, so if we change their location on the part, that would flow through. E for extrude, one, two, Drag you all the way down through, and I've now got those two cut holes. We're done. So how's this gonna work? We're gonna go machine right now this block of aluminum. We're gonna interpolate out and press fit in a dowel pin to hold it on one side. We're gonna drill a center drill to hold with a live center on the other end with a tailstock. That way this trending is fully supported. We've got some amount of a player adjustment in where it's held for clearances. 
and then we're going to drop our part in that will have already been machined to size and had the two quarter 20s drilled into it and that'll let us do these three different angle holes um, probably all from this top location let's cam this up cam expand my cad tree let's turn off the part so i don't see it new setup now this is important because we've got lots of components here and i only want to work on our trunnion so see how i have eight bodies selected x that out and just pick this stock i have a fixed size box 1.5 by 1.5 by i forget how long it is i'll have to go look 5.75 uh oh okay we'll fix that here setup Model orientation, select Z-axis. I'll pick this face right here. And X-axis will be a line. There we go. Stock width is 5.75, 1.5 1 by 1.5. And just to get rid of the noise, let's turn our light bulbs off for the rest of this stuff so we don't see it. Much easier to, for me to think about it this way. Click OK. Templates, folks, right click, create from template, JWS mill. That's my, I need to rename that, but that's my Tormach aluminum template. So for me, really the magic here is gonna be the shear hog. And we can do it on a 2D adaptive. So let's move that to the top. It's much easier to delete the extra templates that you don't care about. Actually, we'll still face it down. Edit. Pick our shear hog. Again, we'll put uh, our template, our latest template in the video description. Shear hog. Geometry will be this to that. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it should work. We're going to actually push it. Let's have some fun here. 0.25. Multiple depths, 0.2. And let's push it as hard as I can, I think. 4,000 at 65 inches a minute. That's really cooking. We may, we may not be able to go that hard. Got my spot already set up. So I'll pick one, two. And see how I, because it's a template, it saved it as the bottom height is the whole top of the 50 thou offset. So when we simulate it, you'll see it's only going to do a little spot. I'm not going to go too deep into that hole. Drill it with a, this will be a clearance hole for a quarter 20. So we'll drill it with a, for me, a number seven drill. One, two, heights should be all good. Already selected templates, I'm telling you. We are going to do a horizontal. I'm going to pick my marital rougher, which actually gives a really nice floor finish. Selection will be this. With a one, I should fix my template to have a positive one thou offset on that. That'll clean up that floor. We also need to clean up the sidewall. I should be able to do that with tool 31. So here I'm going to, I'll click Alt. And over here, I'll stay half a thou off the floor, which should give me, you can actually argue you should cut into the floor there uh, to relieve it from any corner dings on the part, to be honest with you. We'll do it, leave it like that for now though. And this will be an edge break. Simulate. I'll have to, I'm going to clean the stock up before we start here. So again, we're kind of having fun here. We've just got so much material to hold on to. So if there's ever been a time to push the shear hog, this is a, a great example of that part. So we'll shear hog that out. Drill. Oh, there we go. F fix the top height of those holes. And horizontal that cleans up the floor. 
clean up the side walls, chamfer. Again, I'll fix that already. So the only thing I needed to fix was, for some reason, that hole started drilling awful high heights. Top height is not stock top. Top height is selection. You do whole top. I'll just do selection of this. Poking through. Good. Let's go set it up. Okay, change of plan. What we're going to do is I want to uh, drill out and mill out and purpolate out that uh, press fit hole for the dowel pin before we weaken this part by machining out the cavity that actually holds our workpiece. So we just did a quick 3 8 drill. And now we're coming in with our normal quarter inch end mill. We're going to bore out, leaving 5 thou on the radial wall. We'll walk it in now with a 2D contour after this. I'm looking for a 499 fit. So again, the idea here is let's get this done on the ends because this is the most critical part for, uh, for our tolerance of how we use this trunnion. You'll know we've got the coordinate system in the top right. That's important as we rotate this part or flip it over to do the center drill on the other side. You'll see that here in a second. Doing a repeat finish pass on that 2D contour, you absolutely have tool deflection. I don't care what machine you're on, that repeat pass gives us a more accurate nominal size. And now we'll grab our gauge pin set. Okay, let's see where are we at here. Oh, that's funny. That's, whoo, that's great fit. We're under, which I knew we would be, so now let's walk it out. That's a four. 94, so we've got to do 5 thou. So let's go in two and a half thou more on our radial stock. We're doing a quick jam from here. I'll do that now, and then we'll repost just to the last code. I finally did something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I put a computer out here in the shop, which is great. I spent all my time in my office camming up parts, but when I want to come make a quick change, like a 2D contour stock to leave, I've got a computer right here. All my files are obviously there on the cloud. And boom, I can come right back over to the machine and we're good to go. We were using wear offsets in the last, I think it was last week's Wednesday widget on that little wheel part. And I do want to start using those more because in times like this, I'm just making one part. It's so nice to be able to sit there with the controller and dial in wear, change your tool paths. Uh, on the fly versus going back and reposting even when we've got the computer right here it's just it's just nice it's like in our organization video you make better parts when the tools you need are at hand because we're all inherently lazy oh that's so close 498 should go based on that fit oh yeah so the 498 goes and when it's in there there's a little bit of wobble so i'm calling that good for press fitting our dowel in. So remember our zero is up here. So when we flip our part, we're gonna flip it like this. And then we're gonna use this corner, which is the same plane and edge, so the outside two faces. We have continuity there, which should give us better concentricity between this side and that side. I'm pecking just because I don't want any chips to build up. I want to try to get a good service finish. It's kind of a bearing finish. Even though we're using a live center, I want this to be a nice uh, concentric. I don't want to cause it to deflect. Uh, let's see how she feels. Oh, yeah. I like that, actually. If I had the ability to regrind that, I probably would. But this should work for what we're trying to get done here. Awesome. Now we're going to rough her out with the shear hog. Here goes nothing. We actually might stall this out. I don't, this might be pushing it too hard. It's been a while. Oh, not at all. Totally fine.
Look at those chips. Clearance is clearance. Bird's nesting, I should be actually driving that drill faster, harder, and shorter pecks. Uh, it's not too bad here, but man, I, I'm trying to just quit that, period. Clean up the floor. I was just talking to uh, CJ at Autodesk and he was like, why don't you use 2D Pocket more? And you know, I should, you get in these habits. Even I get in these habits where you just get comfortable and you use the same tool paths all the time. And 2D Pocket is great because it'll do better floor cleanups than adaptive. I don't like 2D Pocket because it's not adaptive, but uh, I should make it a goal to utilize that tool path more. And there's nothing wrong with horizontal. We're also gonna check this when we put it in the trunnion, but there's a chance, it kind of reminds me of when we sort of botched the fifth axis platter that we made for the Haas, and I really struggled to flip it and deck it parallel so the device was true. And the obvious answer was, don't fight the wrong battle. Just put it on the fifth axis and machine it in place. And the same thing here. If we have a problem running, dialing this in, we might actually do cleanup passes or just lower the height plane a little in the trunnion. And that should, if I'm thinking about this correctly, solve our problem because we're machining it in place. You see a couple of tool uh, face marks there, but it is really smooth. Love machine champers. I just do. God, they're so nice. We need to press a half inch dowel pin into this hole. Let's be smart about it. I learned this trick a while back and I too often forget to use it. 2D contour. We'll just use our quarter inch end mill. I'll click that, but let's drop it down. Say point eh, one two five. Yeah, one. Let's do a little more. Point one five inches. And on stock to leave, we'll say negative point oh oh two. That'll give us fourth out total extra clearance on that hole, which is going to let that dowel pin slip into the first point one five inches which really won't affect the ability for that thing to press fit down in and retain it. And it will be much easier to start that dowel pin and keep it straight. We're also gonna use a Loctite uh, retaining compound, which I hope will help. That, this is one of my concerns though, is a, a hardened round dowel pin could slip more easily. Press fits are pretty good, but we're also gonna be pushing on this thing as we drill from the side. We'll see. Dowel pin doesn't fit. It fits. Actually, that's darn it. I wish I'd taken a little less. Oh well. Let's go press it in. Anybody ha else have experience with this stuff? You, uh, you know, real machinists or expert, you know, shop guys? Glue and Loctite. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. 648 retaining compound. Does it read it? Say what it is here. Press or close fit. Well, let's pull up the web page on it. This stuff's really interesting. Loctite 648, high strength rapid cure retaining compound. Retention of parts with clearance or interference fit. <laughs> Fun fact, we have both. We've got the interference fit where we press in, and we've got a little bit of clearance fit where I just machined out to make it easier to start that pin. Excellent for dynamic, nope. Axial, nope. Radial, yes. So radial is what we have here as we're trying to twist we're basically trying to push down or rotate the trunnion while the jaws are trying to hold that pin steady through bunch of oils, blah, blah, blah. But here's what's funny. Go to McMaster Car and look at how much better the description is. They fill gaps and create stronger bonds than standard retaining compounds. That just means the high strength here to secure unthreaded metallic or metal cylindrical objects to shaft bearings, press fit assemblies. Isn't that amazing? God bless McMaster Car. You know, they're doing a better job of explaining to laymen what it does, and it's funny, this is one of those things for a guy like me where I'm not in a, a big shop or real shop, I'm self-taught, I didn't even know this stuff existed until six months ago. So my press stinks big time. The ram off of the uh, hydraulic piston thing is a little crooked and that's just wreaking havoc here, so guess what? 
we're using our vise. I've got a little Sharpie mark just to make sure I'm moving it in. And you know what I'm going to do? Add a little bit of safety to this here is I'm going to measure how much flex we're getting. This is not for curiosity. It's to make sure if we're not bowing up so bad that we could damage the part or hurt ourselves as we crunch on this thing. I could clamp it down, but I think we'll be okay. Once it starts to go, wow, I thought it would, I thought the indicator near would, needle would move more than that. Oh yeah, this is actually feels good. God, that's a tight fit. A thousandth is not much, but sure creates an interference fit, a tight press. I now have a lot less concern about this thing slipping. Okay. It was a three and a quarter inch dowel pin and 2.8 or so. So we've got 0.3. We should be able to push it in a little bit more. Although on, really, I'm not too worried about it at this point. That was really, uh, it's really in there. Make a mark, witness mark. I'm calling that good. We did go in a little bit more, but boy, if that doesn't hold it, I think this is, we've got bigger problems. Sweet. That's a wrap, folks, for this week. Come back next week. We're going to get the fourth axis set up. We're going to dial this thing in. We're going to go through the fourth axis positional cam infusion, and hopefully we'll make our part. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next Wednesday.